What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Rosewood Recording YouTube channel. This is how to run backtracks for your band the hard way. So just like a lot of you might be watching, I play in a band. So I was working on the backtracks for my band today, and I decided that I just wanted to share something with you guys. Most bands running backtracks today will do the same kind of setup, where you take an audio file, where your backtrack is panned to the left, and your click track is panned to the right, and the one panned left goes to the PA, the one to the right, the click track, goes to your drummer. There's a ton of variations on this, and they all kind of have their benefits, but after years of playing shows, I think I finally figured out how to run backtracks for my band the hard way. To start, you'll need an audio interface with multiple outputs, at least two. Here I have a Focusrite 18i20, I'd recommend the Scarlett 2i2 if you're looking to get something cheaper for a home recording setup. You'll do the same thing here as you would with Splitter, run output 1 left to the PA and output 2 right to the drummer. Next, open up your DAW of choice, I'm using Ableton Live, drag the song and drop it in there, and then go and figure out the tempo of it. I do this usually by just going to Google and typing in tap tempo and pulling up the first thing that pops up. So I'm just going to go ahead and play the song. Stop it, I'm gonna do that. So then go through and get to where you can play it, just add some in there, and then I usually just program the synth in because it's easier for me than to play it on the keyboard. So here it is. All right. Cool. And then it'll just end up sounding something like this. But you can copy that and just paste it like a million times real quick. I'm just going to fast forward this part of the video. Alright, fast forwarded. Um, and now I'm just going to drag in the tracks. I got those from our producer. I just asked him for the samples send of our uh, project and he gave it to us. So usually you can ask and just get that. Line it up to make sure it works and it's perfect with the actual song. Um, and then let's go play it. This is what it's going to sound like with the click and the tracks. Uh, let's put a bass drop in here now. So I'm gonna just drag and drop any sample that I like in here real quick. Here's a bass drop that I like. Uh, you can find them online, freesound.org. Let me just line that up a little better. All right, let's see what this sounds like. Not bad. And putting bass drops in is a lot of fun. Uh, let's do a snare bomb next. Same thing, I'm just gonna drag a sample that I like off of the internet. Um, drag and drop it, put it where I want it. I think it goes right on that snare. I'm just going to play this back again from a little bit further so you can hear it with the bass drop and the snare sample added in there. Okay, 
Yeah, so that's kind of what it'll sound like coming through the speakers. I'm not going to have the click coming through, obviously, and that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to set the outputs to tell the PA send one left to get the tracks, the bass drop, the snare sample. And then I'm going to send right to the drummer the click in the song so he can have something to listen to and play along to. So I'm just going to go play it again so you can hear now it'll be coming out of only the left side and the right side, which is basically the same thing your splitter does. this instead of the more simple way it opens up so many doors for your backtracks in ear monitor mixes stereo backtracks midi controllers dmx lighting automation live vocal effects automated guitar effects and even more than that i could go down the rabbit hole of what you can do with backtracks so please let me know in the comments what you'd like to hear about and thank you so much for watching make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see some more and catch you later